Once we've performed our experiment and collected our data, uh, we are ready to actually analyze our data with our ANOVA method. And I'll, produ I'll produce another video that will actually go through some like the nuts and bolts of actually what's going on uh, with our ANOVA testing. Uh, but suffice it to say that when we collect our data and we run the ANOVA analysis in our software, uh, it will provide some new test statistics and some new output. So with the ANOVA uh, analysis, we are interested in a new statistic and it's called the F statistic. And with our F statistic, we actually have two degrees of freedom that we need to report. We need to report the degrees of freedom uh, with, uh, between groups, and that's going to be just the number of groups that we have minus one. So that will be two if we're doing three, uh, three different groups. And then we need to have the number within groups which is just the sample size minus the number of groups that we have. So let's suppose for this one it's just like 126. And when we get this, we get some value, and let's suppose that this is going to be like 15.69. Okay, now this 15.69 is not the same like interpretation that we had when we were using a T distribution or when we, when we were doing a Z distribution, where that was like the number of standard deviations away from the mean. And the reason why that's not the case anymore is because our distribution looks really, really skewed. That's kind of like what the F distribution looks like. So this 15 means that we're just kind of going out here to 15, and then we find the area under the curve for a specific p-value. And our p-value in this case, uh, we'll say is like equal to 0 0.0000. It's really, really small. When this happens, we report our p-value as just less than 0.001. So if it's less than 0.001, that's just how you, how you report it. It basically just means that our p-value is really small. We found very significant results. Okay, and how we interpret our p-value is the same as we've always done. It's like assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Now remember, our null hypothesis was that all of the means were equal to one another. So if we make that assumption, what the p-value says is this is the likelihood that we would see a result this weird or weirder uh, if the null hypothesis is actually true. So what we're going to do is we are going to reject because our p-value is less than alpha. So if we had set up, well, I'd erase it now, but we had our alpha set up as 0.05. So if our p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And when we reject the null hypothesis, we are ready to dive into our conclusion. And the, the first part of our conclusion is very similar to what we've been doing. We basically just say if we've collected sufficient evidence or not in order to reject the null hypothesis or the claim of the null hypothesis. So that's that. But then we also have to do a post hoc uh, if we have significant results. And we've done that before with just confidence intervals. But now our confidence intervals are more complicated because Remember, we are now doing a pairwise comparison, which means we're going to compare fruit to spices, and we're going to compare fruit to clothing, and we're going to compare spices to clothing. So we actually have three separate comparisons that we're going to do. And for the null hypothesis to be rejected, only one of these comparisons have to be shown to be different. Now, if we have a whole bunch of groups, we're going to have a whole bunch of pairwise comparisons. The nice thing is, is though that in our post hoc analysis, we only need to talk about the comparisons that were found to be significantly different. So that kind of helps us narrow things down. Now, if they're all significant, we need to report about them all. If only one of them is significant, even if you had 10 or you know 20 um, pairwise comparisons, you only have to talk about that one uh, significant difference. Uh, and that's how we basically do this. And with the method that we're using with this post hoc is called a Tukey. So it's a post hoc method called Tukey. And it will provide us the confidence intervals for all of these pairwise comparisons and let us know which ones were significant and which ones were not significant. And we'll cover in our next video about how we can actually report uh, our conclusions and our two key results.